Welcome to Skull to the Bowl with J.C. Goosen. Hello, I'm J.C. Goosen, and this is my new podcast. I am so excited to be recording this, and I want to thank you all so much for tuning in to listen. Today is going to be the first episode, and we're going to get into the official hiring of the new Minnesota Vikings head coach, Kevin O'Connell. Kevin O'Connell is the former offensive coordinator of the now Super Bowl champion Los Angeles Rams. He becomes the 10th head coach in Minnesota Vikings history at only 36 years old. He was a former quarterback in the NFL playing for New England, Detroit, the New York Jets, Miami, and then San Diego for the Chargers, who are now in L.A., He worked for special projects in San Francisco. This is where he met the new Minnesota Vikings general manager, Kwesi Adolfo Mensa. And then he worked as quarterbacks coach in Cleveland for the Browns, who Kwesi also went on to work for, although they never crossed over as Kevin O'Connell was only there for one year. He then went to Washington to be their quarterbacks coach, um, stayed there, and actually ended up working with current Minnesota Vikings quarterback, Kirk Cousins, for a single year before he went off in free agency to Minnesota. The following season, he was promoted to offensive coordinator in Washington. He only lasted for a season, as after that, Ron Rivera was brought in, and Kevin O'Connell was not retained in that staff. So he moved to the Los Angeles Rams, where he joined Sean McVay, who was the tight ends coach, Uh, and pass game coordinator in Washington, where Kevin O'Connell had been working, and McVay hired him as his offensive coordinator. That's where he's been for the past two seasons, and again, he just won a Super Bowl championship with that team. So what do we know about Kevin O'Connell? Well, we know some about his staff already. We know that For his assistant head coach, he's hired Mike Pettin. For offensive coordinator, that's still kind of up in the air. Tomorrow, they're actually having some interviews. They're either going to end up hiring Wes Phillips and or Thomas Brown. Now, I say and or because there are reports coming out that somehow both of them are going to be snatched from L.A. Um, It's just whether or not they end up both having the offensive coordinator title or However, that ends up working out. Uh, Defensive coordinator has been confirmed as Ed Donatel. No special teams coordinator has been confirmed yet. I have yet to even see rumors on any names coming out with that position. For quarterbacks, we have the main quarterbacks coach as Chris O'Hara. and assistant quarterbacks coach is Jared Johnson. Wide receiver coach is the only one being retained from the previous staff under Mike Zimmer, where the wide receiver coach will remain Keenan McCardell coach that players like Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen have said on record that they were really hoping would be retained by the new staff. Running backs coach is going to be Curtis Modkins. He's also going to work as the run game coordinator. Tight ends coach will be Brian Angelicho. Uh, And O-line coach will be the now um, Kind of, I wouldn't say famous, but well-known around the league. Uh, Chris Kupfer is a solid offensive line coach. Very excited about that hire. And his assistant offensive line coach will be Justin Riscotti. His D-line coach will be Chris Rumpf. Linebacker coach has yet to be named. Again, no rumors as far as that position is considered. And then DBs, none of these have been officially confirmed or hired, but Deshae Townsend and Jonathan Cooley have been floated. Jonathan Cooley has also been floated as pass game coordinator uh, to work on the staff. So in the future, there should be individual episodes on as many of these coaches as humanly possible once the staff is all completely confirmed. We're able to dive into more of the schematic sense and really get into what this Minnesota Vikings staff is going to be all about, what their approaches are going to be, 
Um, obviously, there's a lot of youth, but there's also enough age and experience in here that Kevin is going to have some guys that he's going to be able to lean on. He's going to be able to delegate to, which was something he brought up in his presser. So let's get into Kevin's philosophy, because that was what a lot of this press conference was all about, really figuring out who Kevin O'Connell is and what he believes as far as his football mindset. So after listening to his intro presser today, which can be found at vikings.com, the team's official website, Kevin O'Connell made it clear that he is invested in establishing a strong culture. That was a term that was thrown around quite a bit. That culture includes clear communication with the front office, staff under him, and the players. Quasi and Kevin made it very clear that they are on the same page when it comes to football talk, uh, and they are also very like-minded outside of the game, too, when they had their first couple interviews. First was in Zoom, second was in person in L.A. Um, there was just a sense of connection immediately. It seemed like a, a, quote, perfect fit, you know, like these two guys really wanted to work for each other. Uh, so these staffs have been put together in order to work, again, for, really, really for each other, which was something that Quasi had said in his press conference. And Kevin didn't really say those exact words, but the ideas that he was alluding to basically uh, said the exact same thing. And this is obviously a huge breath of fresh air compared to the previous era of Vikings football. Uh, we don't need to really get into that too much. Obviously, new era is the new era, and we're excited to be in it. But Kevin seems extremely eager to get into the final steps of building his staff, uh, sitting down with players and putting together a scheme that puts his team in the best position to win, which is obviously um, – you know, the recipe that every head coach wants to have or strives to have. But it was really funny listening to his press conference. And he brought up multiple times kind of this idea of, guys, as soon as I'm done answering these questions, I am going to go back upstairs with Quasi and the rest of these guys. And we're going to already start hammering out some stuff. So that was extremely uh, fantastic to hear. You can just tell that there's so much youth and excitement in him and, and in this opportunity. Uh, with the combine coming up, free agency, and then the draft, uh, there's still a lot for Kevin and Kwesi to iron out, but it seems like the beginning of their shared vision is well in motion already. Uh, it really feels like all this stuff is just coming at us so fast it's like a train and it just won't stop but these are guys that look at that train and they're like yeah i you know what i could stop that train if i wanted to but it's even more fun to run alongside that thing and really get a challenge out of uh this situation so it's it's awesome it's absolutely awesome to hear stuff like that um uh, now Kevin was very clear about making the quote why constantly available and understood by basically everybody within the organization. Um, and that's for every decision that he would be making. So the staff that's under him, the front office, the players, he wants to make this why available so that there is never a question of why this drill? Why this person in this particular spot on the roster? Um, why this trade? You know, uh, why this scheme in this situation? Why this play call? All these things, right? Like that, that is something that he wants people to feel comfortable asking. And he wants them to also uh, feel like they're going to get a genuine answer which I think is extremely mature and shows that he's obviously learned quite a bit from the different organizations that he's been around. Um, he really seems like a player's coach if I've ever seen one. And I have a feeling that this team is going to get behind him very quickly. I don't think he's going to have any issues with any of the veterans on this team. I think the young guys are obviously immediately going to fall in love with him. Um, I think his, his youth in his football approach is going to do him very well in this league, in this position as head coach, you know, this, this kind of youth wave is something that has been talked about quite a bit. And 
to have a 40 year old and a 36 year old, the two most important positions in your football organization really shows that you're committed to riding this new wave. You know, you're not going to fight against the current anymore. Like, let's be honest, you kind of have been with uh, previous staffs, both in the front office and um, with coaching staffs. So it's super interesting. I think a lot of that is taken from LA. I think that that, again, is, is a young staff, but also a very understanding and player-focused staff when it comes to um, making all of the players feel important and understood and that's obviously where he gets this this why uh, mentality of, of that being available from is from Sean McVay, um, who's basically like a mentor to him. So uh, the more nitpicky side, we can kind of look into um, his philosophy as far as the actual uh, flow of, of what this team is going to look like, right? So he made it clear that he's, he's going to be calling the plays for the purple and gold. And that is something that he has not done outside of his single season in 2019 as offensive coordinator in Washington. Um, and it's not necessarily shocking because Kevin is an offensive line in the NFL, obviously, I mean, coming from being a quarterback and then basically only working in um, the offensive side of these coaching staffs that he's been a part of throughout the NFL. But it is telling because McVay did all of the play calling in LA, you know, whereas Kevin's job was to put together um, a list of plays for Sean McVay to call in game time positions. And in fact, Kevin O'Connell was asked by Brandon Staley, who was the defensive coordinator um, for the LA Rams and then hired by the LA Chargers as their head coach. He was asked to come to the LA Chargers as the offensive coordinator. And Brandon Daly told Kevin O'Connell, I'm going to hire you as offensive coordinator and you're going to be able to make play calls. And since that was a uh, lateral move instead of a promotion, the Rams were able to block it. Sean McVay said, no, I'm going to keep you here. You're not going to be calling plays, but I'm going to keep you here and I'm going to keep developing you. Um, so I, I think that there's positives and negatives to that, obviously, but seeing as McVay is arguably the best play caller on the offensive side of the ball right now in the NFL, um, again, I mean, that guy who literally just won a Super Bowl, uh, has a very all out, like we're going to compete mindset. I, I am excited by this. Um, and, and, and we'll get into a negative or two that I, I might still have with this hire, but this presser really highlighted uh, a lot of the strengths of Kevin O'Connell, which is massive. I think that's something that you obviously need to do when you're in his position at his age and just coming into a place that let's be honest, not many people really knew who he was or not a lot of Vikings fans know who he is, uh, which hopefully this episode is helping you with that and giving you a better understanding, but back to really what Kevin O'Connell is doing for the Rams and why this is so important that he is now going to be calling the plays is this idea of delegation, right? That he, he's also kind of saying that he got from Sean McVay. I mean, and obviously he's gotten this from his other staffs as well, but really more so with like this youth movement that I've been kind of talking about and this idea of, I'm not going to take everything on my shoulders. I'm going to, I'm going to hand things off to my coaches. I'm going to depend on them. And in that same breath, they're going to depend on me. It's going to be a very give take relationship. Um, I'm going to go to bat for these guys and they are going to go to bat for me. And in the end, we're both going to end up looking really good. And I, I think you can already see that just by his offensive philosophy and his staff philosophy, the fact that he's hired an assistant head coach right out of the gate, a guy who is older than him and more experienced than him. Um, hiring Ed Donatel as his defensive coordinator, another older gentleman who has a lot of experience in the NFL. Uh, a Vangio disciple, by the way, who, you know, is, is, is a defensive guy, bleeds defense, right? Somebody you can definitely delegate and depend on in, in that setting. And then also 
having already set aside run game coordinators and pass game coordinators, it really seems like this offense is going to be a committee-esque approach, right? I mean, when you look at Kevin O'Connell, he's got this massive history of being a quarterback coach and being a quarterback in the NFL and a very clear outlook that the quarterback is the most important part of the offense, which I mean, not many people are, you know, going to argue with that, but I would not be shocked if this is a guy who sits down, not just once a week, like Mike Zimmer did with Kirk Cousins, but up to twice a day with Kirk Cousins and, and other coaches on his staff and talks about, okay, how can we attack certain parts of this defense? And how can we find certain kinks in this defense that specifically fit the strengths of Kirk Cousins or for that matter, whoever is under center for the Minnesota Vikings. We're going to get into the Kirk Cousins situation here in just a minute, but so, um, that's what's going to be really interesting about him calling plays because if if you think about it in this context of like okay I don't really understand what you're saying JC so so he was an offensive coordinator in LA but he didn't call the plays which as shocking as it may sound really isn't that you know um out of the ordinary in the NFL there are a lot of head coaches that like to call offensive plays but yes he's an offensive coordinator he didn't he didn't call the plays but he put together uh, what you could almost call a menu. Uh, Luke Braun did a great job of kind of really coming up with uh, the most mainstream example of that. But to kind of like even more closely describe that, you can think of it as a local high class restaurant, right? So you have the head chef guy that's in charge of the entire kitchen and he may delegate somebody that he trusts you know his second perhaps his, his sous chef or whatever to go out and buy the most fresh produce at the local market now the chef because of his experience in cooking food and having done it for years he knows the area he knows what's probably going to be ripe around that time he knows what's going to be uh, the most available as far as cost uh, along with how fresh it is um, to make up his dishes, right? But but the sous chef is going to be the one that's that's going to this market now and really judging the produce and and making the final decision as far as purchasing what this food is going to be. And then the chef has to take what the sous chef has purchased now and come up with the dishes. So even if the chef doesn't end up using a portion of the food that is bought by the sous chef, he can still have the faith that that sous chef went into it trying to buy the best produce, trying to put the chef in the best situation to succeed. Um, so I, I don't know. I find that to be a really good um, metaphor to what Kevin O'Connell was doing for the LA Rams and, and why it is so important that we look at the success that the Rams have had over the past two seasons on offense, because a lot of those moments have, have been because of Kevin O'Connell. So Kevin also made it extremely clear that although he was an offensive guy uh, in the past and he'll be calling plays, he believes in equal importance of all three phases of the football team. He has so far, put together a really solid staff as we've already kind of gotten into uh, to back him up and was very capable of answering questions that were thrown at him from a defensive point of view. Uh, I found this really interesting that he, he specifically gave credit to Harrison Smith as being kind of the perfect style defensive back for what his defensive scheme is, or at least the idea of what he wants to play um, for coverage schemes and in his, within his defense. And he also mentioned Eric Hendricks by name, as well as Anthony Barr. And that was also super interesting because many believe that for sure Barr had played his last season in Minnesota this last year um, after renegotiating his contract and making void years and yada, yada, yada. It's, it's a bunch of minutia, but 
trust me, I will be monitoring that situation for you all because the fact that this could potentially switch from a 4-3 defense into a 3-4, Anthony Barr is a 3-4 type linebacker. I mean, this is what we've been talking about as far as kind of letting his rushing the passer shine and, and really kind of start to hone those skills. Now, he's 28, 29 years old, so there's not a ton more that he can do when he's injury prone, but it's still a, a situation to monitor because it is potentially a scheme that he could really do some damage in. Uh, special teams, I don't have any recollection of really being mentioned specifically as far as any names or any ideas as far as special teams goes, but uh, it's definitely something that he understands is important, obviously coming from a very solid special teams unit with the LA Rams. So I have no doubt that, again, he genuinely sees all three phases of this football team as equally important. So finally, I mean, let's get into it. You all want to know about the Kirk Cousins situation. Uh, I think that's what a lot of people were most intrigued by with the hiring of Kevin O'Connell, especially with their past relationship in Washington, him being an offensive minded guy. Um, uh, you know, we, we've talked about youth and how now uh, potentially Kwesi and Kevin could be making a similar decision to Rick and Zim as far as kind of tying their success to Kirk Cousins if they decide to go with him and all that stuff. So, so some Kirk Cousins <laughs> questions came up very fast uh, in the interview. Uh, we all knew that it would come up, and he really didn't disappoint with his eagerness to answer the questions. Uh, so I think a lot of Vikings fans were kind of waiting to see his answers to some of these questions before they would decide just how much they were going to back the new head coach. But Kevin made it clear that he believes in Kirk as a quarterback. He sees the passer as elite and easily compared to Matt Stafford, former quarterback in LA, just won the Super Bowl. Um, he, see, he saw this in how well they both throw the ball, uh, specifically with accuracy and with strength. O'Connell also made it clear that his intentions are to find what Kirk does best currently and how he can bring what worked in LA to Kirk and Minnesota. So as of right now, Kirk Cousins seems to be at the center of what the Vikings will be building for the foreseeable future. Uh, and this was also backed up by Quasi. I believe it was Chris Thomason from Pioneer Press who had asked the question. He specifically um, asked it to both Quasi and to Kevin. They both basically reiterated the same thing, that, that as of this moment, Kirk Cousins is at the center, really, of most of what they're doing on offense. Uh, so, I mean, statistically speaking, I would say most agree that, that Kirk looks like a better quarterback than Matt Stafford does at the very least on paper. Um, so it'll be interesting with this new coaching staff, if this Vikings offense uh, and, and hopefully a revitalized and rejuvenated defense um, after the atrocious product that was put on the field this last year um, can begin to contend right away under Kevin O'Connell, I think that's really hard to say right now whether or not that is actually going to happen. Um, I would even argue that my gut is really saying it's not going to happen. But that's not out of lack of love for Kevin O'Connell. I mean, he's my head coach now. I, I want to back him in everything as long as he's wearing purple and gold. But I personally still need some convincing that Kirk Cousins is a Super Bowl caliber quarterback and I actually I should say Super Bowl winning quarterback uh, I mean I, I sincerely hope that Kevin O'Connell and Kwesi Dofa Mensa prove that I know absolutely nothing I mean it would be absolutely amazing if, if this time next year I was sitting here recording an episode about how the Minnesota Vikings are Super Bowl champions instead of um, 
going into yet another off season, hoping that next year is our year. But uh, for now, we really have to just wait until this staff is fully fledged out. And then we can really start to speculate the kind of schemes that this new era of Vikings football is going to be running. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I'm very precautious in my optimism at this point, but I am excited nonetheless. And I think Kevin O'Connell did a fantastic job today overall in his presser. And as I mentioned earlier, he quelled some of my worries uh, that I had going into this hire uh, really mainly if he seemed like he could handle the position of head coach in the NFL, if, if he could really take that heat. Uh, but his outlook on coaching, culture, and communication really touched my heart. And I would be lying if I said that I don't have a fire in my gut right now um, of excitement for some Minnesota Vikings football. So with that, the first episode of Skull to the Bull with JC Goosen is going to come to a close. So thanks for listening to this first episode. As I mentioned earlier, I plan on having multiple episodes breaking down the many individuals on this coaching staff under Kevin O'Connell um, coming out as, as soon as the entire staff is put together, officialized, and uh, I have a chance to really dig into what they are all about. So with that, I hope to hear from all of you on social media. Uh, I would love to know what else you guys want to hear on the podcast. And I look forward to next time. Skull to the bowl.